do you think? Think it's magically protected? Yeah, me too. Let me scroll. Alright, stand back. You know what? Kill a yui. That's a what. I didn't say it right. Hey, no, we. Hey, no, what? That's a what? Oh! I guess it was magically protected. Hey, you standing over my shoulder is not helping. She hand me the clanner. Oh, hey, we're back. All right. Hey, this is me, your good buddy Thorne. And in this part two, I want to talk to you about the tool set that you need to build to be successful as a rogue. All right. We are going to build the thieves' tools. So, you're, let's just get started. Let me clear the table off. Excellent dinner. So, really, when we're talking about being a rogue, you are going to be that petty thief. You can expand that out a little bit, but that's going to be your starting point, really. Um, and you got to think, you got to think like a thief, okay? So, what are, what is your, going to be your primary mission for the party? Let's say you get hired by a bunch of guys or girls, you get hired as the party rogue. What is going to be your job? Now, we're going to focus this second part on being the the thief, the, the break-in artist, the lock picker, the uh, disarmer of traps, okay? So, to think that through, first off, you gotta think about what will you need to break into somewhere. And some of this is gonna have wor real world um, crossovers. And, and so, really we take reality, <laughs> no pun intended, we take reality and conform it to our world. So. Let's just take a look at, there we go. Let's just have a look at what we kind of need to be a successful break-in or break-in artist. I don't know what to call it. Um, a criminal. Your basic criminal element, uh, your petty criminal, We'll probably start off with breaking and entering. Now, to break into somewhere, it really doesn't take a lot of work. Uh, you're going to smash the lock, you're going to smash a window, you're going to crack your crack the door, you're going to break in. So let's take a look at that real basic toolkit. Now, some LARPs, as we talked before, some LARPs require you to have a physical representation of that tool. Now, I've got some modern tools I'm going to show you. And then we're going to work on, in future episodes, how to retrograde those back 
into your role-playing fantasy world. So our real basic stuff, we need a hammer to break in, and I've chosen this one because it also has a bit of a pry. This is a nice smash the window, pry the lock open, basic tool. The next thing we're going to need is a chisel. Now this is a very small chisel for our pack, but it is a cold chisel and if you're going to knock a lock off or bust the hinges off of something, this and a hammer are going to get you in. Okay. And then the third real basic tool that you're going to need as a criminal is going to be your pry bar. Now, this is a very small pry bar because it's very concealable, but it's very effective. Um, with this you can pop a a padlock off a lock, you can pop hinges off a door, you can force a door, uh, it's very very useful. Okay, now This is, like I said, your basic breaking and entering kit. You, if the door is magical, let's say they've got a magical trap on it, you might want to have a, a scroll or a spell or somebody in your party uh, to um, you know, um, disarm magic, um, dispel magic, detect magic, if there's runes there, you might need to have somebody in your party that can read uh, the magical spell. Uh, it might not be your responsibility at a basic level, but as you move up in grade, so to speak, it might come in handy to have a couple of those scrolls on hand to dispel whatever you're working on. So keep that in mind. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about a little bit is your more advanced criminal element kit. Okay. And we're going to start putting together our, um, well, I would like, I'd like to call it your sneaky get kit. It is how to break into something and not have somebody know that you've broken in. All right. And the first thing that you're going to need is a set of lock picks. Now, you can make your set of lock picks into your game with very simple things. You can make them out of plastic card. You could make them out of metal if you want to, if you're if you're skilled with working with wire. Or you can get a set of professional lock picks. You can get them pretty easy. There's several sets out there, and I do have a couple on hand. And uh, the first one is a more advanced lock picking kit. And it pretty much has all the tools that you're ever gonna need. It has various prize and picks and other tools for you to break into a lock. And with a little bit of practice, you can get pretty good at it. Um, is it required that you have a lock picking, a professional lock picking kit like this? No, not exactly, but it is kind of cool to have in, in your role play. Um, here's another set, a little cheaper set that I picked up on Amazon, but it's still the same basic tools. It's very simple. You find the right pick, you work the manipulate the lock and the tumblers, and the lock should open. Once again, in most LARP games, the locks are pretty simple, one and two, um, one and two tumblers, depending on the skill level. Uh, there are other games out there that uh, that have you manipulate another set. But role playing wise, both of these are very nice to have on your person. Uh, a note of caution, however, if <laughs> in real world you get pulled over with this set of tools, uh, there's going to be some questions asked. And um, <laughs> you don't want to be arrested in real world as a, as a thief. So keep that in mind. Don't carry this in your car except for going to and from the game because <laughs> you don't want to get locked up for real and have to use some of this stuff to break out. In addition now, to this basic set of tools, lock picks, this kind of thing, you're going to have, want to have a few other things to break into uh, a box or a chest or, or, or just check for things. And the first thing that I would recommend is a small mirror. This dentist mirror comes in very, very handy. Um, if you're doing um, checking for traps, looking around corners, um, the basics of being a sneaky git. And it comes in various modifications. Uh, this is one of my favorite actually. 
and looks fairly period in game. And when you look at it and say you do get searched by somebody, you can say, oh, well, it's just a mirror, but it does come in very, very handy. So a mirror is something that I highly recommend in, in whatever um, form that it may take for your character. And a pair of forceps come in very, very handy when we're working with traps or trying to get in to grab something into a very small area. Um, and they, they come in very handy. I highly recommend to have a set in your thieves toolkit. And then, if I can figure out where I put it, there we go. Nice pair of wire cutters. Once again, real world uh, might require you to have these. In game, it's nice to have them and for the role play aspect. Um, cutting wires, cutting uh, small things, uh, cutting rope, for example, that come in very handy. And then, a small pair of scissors. Now, once again, this goes with this as well, but if you're trying to disarm a tripwire or something like that, a small pair of scissors might come in very, very handy, um, and I would definitely add that to your toolbox or your tool kit. And then finally, well, not finally, and, and in addition to, any of your, any of your decent thieves are out there are going to have a few normal keys on them uh, basic keys for basic locks. This small one will open a lot of different padlocks. You can see the pattern. Um, and then you can match that with your key or with your lock picks and have that on your person somewhere. In addition, this once again has real world connotations. A handcuff key is very nice to have. Uh, it works very well on small locks. It also works on handcuffs. Um, I would definitely have a couple of these on your person. One fairly easy to find that you can get to. Another one hidden somewhere on your person in the unlikely event that you are taken prisoner in game and confined. Uh, a handcuff key might come in very, very handy and uh, very simple to use. So this is my basic thieves tool kit. Now, there's a few other things I want to add to this to make it more effective. And the first one of these being a couple of small knives. Now, this is just a modern one. And uh, with a flick out blade. Hello, cinnamon. And it is very handy to use. It's very nice to have in your tool kit. I've got a couple different knives on hand. There's a couple other things that I normally try to keep in there. And I'm showing you the, the real world equivalent. This is a set of lacing wire. Um, it's very light gauge, it is steel. It will hold pretty much a lot of things, but it also will cut fairly easy. And it's very nice to have. And in addition, as I was saying, we have a few of our potions and or scrolls. These happen to be a couple potions, a potion of healing, because you never know and a potion of strength. Just give me that little edge over the top see if you can try to break something open, okay? Now, the, one of the things that we're gonna talk about when we do dungeoneering is a weighted rope. And this is about a 30 foot rope, very light. It's weighted at the end and I can toss that forward to set off trip wires and um, traps. Um, Again, goes in my pack, it'll come out when I need it, and it happens to be pretty handy. In addition, I've got a small lantern with a candle in it. This happens to be an LED candle. And then I also have in my kit lighting tools, or uh, matches or what have you, in order to simulate lighting the candle. Um, this way, if it get, does get knocked over, it's not going to start a fire. And you know you're going to be able to light it. And if the battery runs out, well, guess what? You can't get the candle lit. But I highly recommend this. The small uh, lantern cost me about $3 at Walmart. The candle cost me about $2.50. And it has a very nice look to it. Highly recommend that in your toolkit as well. Let's see what all do we have here. In addition... I do have a few padlocks on hand. Um, 
this is to secure my own stuff. I do have the keys for them, but I could also break this open. So, and uh, it makes a very nice uh, period look to your bag. One further thing is I do have a set of real handcuffs. Um, I'm in the process of getting a medieval set of handcuffs with, with a certain key. And, but this makes a really cool little, if I need to pretend to confine somebody in game, there we go. But like I said, I am in the process of getting a medieval looking set. And finally, I had a couple extra knives in my bag, plus a role-playing knife. These are the real ones. This is my role-play knife. And uh, just for some added um, role-play-esque feeling to it. And then I do have this nice little set of throwing daggers that we picked up from Epic Armory. They come in a set of three. And they are, they are um, fully bendable. You can use them to throw. I do plan on stuffing these up in every, well, not every orifice of my body. But they are going to be hidden all over this costume when I finish that role play out. And I picked up six. And they will be hidden all over. Because once again, we don't want to look... We don't want to look dangerous. Uh, well, for the most part, we don't want to look dangerous. This, um, all these weapons, all these tools, in addition to my sword and my dagger and a buckler and my bow and arrow when I'm out in the field, not to mention my body armor when I'm out to the field, so to speak, if I'm on the job, um, this, is pretty, this is a pretty good little kit didn't cost me much money to put it together. I think the lock picks were the most ex expensive things. These run about 25, this ran about 50. Um, the various tools, the whole kit, with the exception of the handcuffs and the padlock, probably cost under $40. And speaking of which, in order to put this stuff and carry it, we're gonna want a bag and I've used this one in the past for various other things. I'm going to use it again. Very straightforward bag. It is a backpack. I can take this off and use this as a satchel. It holds all my gear plus some other stuff. I can strap stuff to the outside. It's a very nice bag. Um, a satchel or a backpack will come in very, very handy. And then last but not least, I do have my gloves in various forms. These are my search gloves. I do have my gauntlets, just to have a different look if you wanted. And then, don't be afraid to use something stupid looking like this. Uh, and I use the word stupid looking because, well, they don't really serve any purpose other than to just look um, bad guy-ish, if you will. But, um, the, the, they will go well with your kit. And now I suggest that you glove up no matter what you do as a rogue. And a lot of people say, well, why would I want to? Uh, there are no, there are no fingerprinting techniques in, in olden days. And that is, that is perfectly true. There's not. However, there's a crap load of poisons out there. And a lot of them are contact poisons that less scrupulous people will sprinkle on locks and doorknobs and windowsills and the like. And then once you touch it, well, better have your Cure Light Wounds potion ready. Okay? So, really, other than the functionality of these things, that pretty much locks it up, no pun intended, for the thieves' tools. Okay? Now just give me a second and we'll move on to the next thing.